Hey, welcome back to GDPG, and we are playing more of the Banner Saga 2. Boom, Banner Saga 2, and uh, this preview. is the preview build. I know we've been awesome. saying that, like, every single episode thus far, but for any of you guys that are just joining in now, we want to make sure you know what's going on, too. Heck yeah. Alright, cool. Uh, if you're turning the map at any time during the travel by pressing the button. Sweet. Cool. As we travel through the world, time passes. Well, we already kind of knew that. Number of days pass. So basically, the, that little, like, bar circling the um, the day counter, that's, like, how far into the day mm -hmm. you are. And uh, as time goes by, uh, your morale will shift up and down. And uh, you also consume supplies, or if you don't have supplies, you consume your clansmen. And then if you don't have supplies, <laughs> your morale will also drop. Consume your clansmen. <laughs> <laughs> Just the Varl are consuming the clansmen. <laughs> We're hungry, and, uh, well, <laughs> there's um, nothing you can do to stop us. Cool. It's allowing us to go to our camp. We can finally see our team. Oh. Or we talk to this guy. I remember him. Consume but I don't a remember. day's worth of supplies. When a day passes in camp, you're kind of Yeah, so okay, basically cool. if we rest, it's going to go through a full day. And which it makes looks sense. like it's going to make us... Can I just... Oh. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> uh. Strangely familiar man with a spear and tattoos beckons you. His movements are somewhat odd, almost comical. This is all you. You wouldn't be confused by Trigvi's presence if you supported this journey long ago. I don't remember this guy. What? Trig you don't remember Trigvi? I know, I don't, man. You can never trust a man through his helmet. This is him? Yes. Oh, I love this guy. <laughs> oh, I chose a good voice for him then, I think. <laughs> what? The man's eyes glaze over for a moment before clearing. <laughs> <laughs> what was he thinking about? He now acts like your old friends. I don't think we got this guy in the pragmatic playthrough. Uh, no, he's actually uh, probably because it was faster to move on and not check the houses, but you don't get him if you don't yes, check the houses. That's exactly that's yeah. exactly what it was, because we were like, Psh, there's nothing there. Uh, I've, I've lost, lost it. <laughs> lost what? My desire to keep going, same as you. Oh, I still want to keep going. I understand, but we need to keep moving. So you're staying here. Don't you stay here, man. Don't don't even ask I gotta him keep this because guy. then he'll do it. I understand, but we have to keep moving. Okay. Bah, you don't really mean that, but you did once and you will again, unless you go down with your ship, Captain. You know what he reminds me of right now? I don't know if you ever watched it, but uh, Scrubs, he reminds me of the janitor. <laughs> <laughs> Where he's like, the only reason he exists is because of the main character. I uh, can I can see that. Anybody who's watched show will, will understand. Because there was no last season. <laughs> Trigvi starts laughing. It's disturbing. And as you walk away, you hear him singing. <laughs> oh, man, he is. Yellow and blue, lie to you, lie to you, lie to you. This Whoa. might be important. It's In the last important. game, in the last game, he said, never trust a man through, uh, through his helmet, Rook. And you're like, should I trust you? And he's like, of course you can trust me. I'm not wearing a helmet. <laughs> because he'll say any, any man with a helmet will lie to you. Sure enough, any person wearing a helmet apparently lies to you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the thing, too, is that you, you kind of see him and dismiss it as, like, you are insane. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's actually a, like, a clever hint to the game, but it's also him actually being insightful. <laughs> maybe he's, like, a prophet. So don't trust yellow and blue, or, like, an oracle. Maybe. Yellow and blue lie to you, lie to you. When a day passes in camp... Oh, yeah, you're making us rest. Right. Yellow and blue. I feel rest. like there were some coral cool. that had Morale those colors. Improved. Yay. And heroes. Yes, this is what I've been wanting to see. Yeah, yeah. We... Ah. Items. I don't <laughs> care anymore. Just <laughs> show me this. Ah. Oh, my God. Look at the <sighs> roster. Full roster. I mean, we're probably going to be split, to be totally honest. I imagine what's going to happen is... So, I mean, in, in Banner Saga 1, right... It started with two separate parties that eventually um, merged. It's insane. Right? So they merged at a certain point. So I imagine we're starting with a huge party and we're going to split, but it's not going to be the same division as last time. What's going to happen is we're going to have an interesting um, combination of, of groups now. I, that's, my, that's my prediction. Did you ever uh, play Final Fantasy VI very much? No. Okay, okay. In Final Fantasy VI, there were a lot of characters. There was like 14, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. that you could get. And uh, they're at certain points and conjunctions, they would actually split. You could actually do like 
multi parts where you would have to control this party and this party, and then it would have to press the lever. See, that's awesome. Do a thing. And so they made you, and in a final battle, uh, when you were going through the four stages of the final battle to get to Kefka the boss, you would switch out party members if they ever fell in combat using all of your people. So I'm wondering if there's going to be something to that. Nice. Also, uh, if you want to get really sad real quick, I want you to look at the first item in our inventory. <laughs> oh, that should be like a level five item now. So Trigvi's necklace, that's still around. Bjarken room. I wonder... Uh, lightning runestone. You know, I don't oh, think this was a thing in Banner mind. Saga 1, but I almost wonder if there's a hidden benefit if Rook wears a Let's bracelet oh i feel like as as a designer i would probably do that right because it's like it's man it only makes sense okay so let's see click on that mark prey cool cool okay so damage auto attack for all allies i hope they changed the interface for this a little bit yeah i got a little clunky okay so one thing i want to point out is that he's level five we can get him to level six if you remember before, you would get two stat points every time you leveled, mm -hmm. but where, like, continue, con call to arm, whoa, what? Oh, Sorry. is it another ability? Choose, okay, higher stats and talents, choose a second oh. ability, increase your item rank, call wow. to arms. The peal of Rook's war, uh, war horn rallies the heroes and calls them to the pillage. During pillage, there are no guaranteed turns. Killing an enemy gives the hero two turns in a row, but the same holds true for the enemy. This calls for wisdom <laughs> and timing. Holy cow! That's, that's awesome. crazy! Oh. I, I really like that ability because it's very like risk-reward, but if you're you strategically sound... Oh, wait, you do. Yeah, you do. But if you're strategic about it, then that is like the finishing move. Let's see if Ivor's still crazy. Yeah, he still has 10 that willpower. Works, that works perfectly with this game too, actually. Rook's new ability because... So, I mean, you you play it's very similar to the way I play this game in terms of strategy. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea is deal as much damage to as many dredge as possible very fast. But don't kill them. Just deal, spread out the damage as much as possible. So that ability works hand in hand with that strategy yeah, because you move you twice. you just chain through them. Exactly. Like you set them up and then you finish them all at once. Dude, that's insane. Look, uh, also, Ivor's new ability is Tempest. Yes! Which is Gnosis ability. Yes! Um... This is pretty cool. So we're getting to see. Oh, what? Okay. Yeah. Still can't promote. Ooh. Oh, he but doesn't I have am enough. really. He doesn't have enough. Yeah, he doesn't. He needs one more kill. But I am really curious to see what his second ability is. I'm. It's. This is awesome that they are adding new abilities to these characters. This is pretty crazy. It really does complicate things, though. Seriously, what? Ha like, it's only gonna take two levels for him. Like, literally two levels for him to reach max stats. Huh. I wonder. I mean, it's possible that. Oh, we don't actually know what he does. It's possible that there's a way to increase that threshold. I don't really know what that would take, but oh. I guess we'll see. As fearless as he is flamboyant, uh, Elio embodies the boldness of the heroes and the ages he knows by heart. Through uh, Though a skull <laughs> by profession, he, his devotion to protecting his wife and children fuels the poet's sword arm. Yeah. Oh, it's, that's pretty cool. It is nice that they mention that he has a wife and, and children. The tale worth oh, telling. Yeah. He's the dude with the knife. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty a little cool. in a little buckler, little hand buckler, punching shield. Uh, <laughs> this uh, the scald uh, exalts his target to, um, to feats of strength and heroism. His words buff an ally for one round, adding one damage for every two strength the enemy is above the target ally. You know what? I think he has the most of. He has a lot of panache. Panache. <laughs> I love that word. The boasts have no effect if the buffed attack ally of an enemy uh, or uh, attacks of an enemy are equal or lower strength. So picking the right target is important. So basically, he makes weaker allies become as powerful, like as the enemies that he's attacking. Oh, interesting. Um, Nid, she was the sniper from long range that Oddleaf trains. Which uh, she is Ludin's awesome. here. Yeah, Ludin joined with you when you got back to the harbor. I thought. Did he? I thought he did. Yeah, it's been a little while. Okay. It has been a little while. Look at his little mustache. He's grooming it out. <laughs> this little guy. Look at his <laughs> mustache. Don't make fun of people that can't grow beards as well, Nathan. Oh, she's, she's so cute. <laughs> I also can talk about him like that because... <laughs> because Ludin we all hate sucks. Ludin. Yeah. Uh, 
All right, Krumer <laughs> is probably my favorite character. Oh yeah, just he like, is mechanically speaking. Because absolutely, he has the ability to get make other people go. <gasps> Look at him; he's even like this. Go. Oh my god! Okay, so this is finally my chance to redeem myself. So anyone that watched the pragmatic playthrough will probably know that uh, Harry Poppins made some very sorry Harry Poppins made some very like <laughs> non strategically sound things, and he said a lot of things that I was I was gen generally like pretty much in agreement with, and I still am with most of those things. But there are a lot of things involving abilities that um, I'll finally get a chance to actually redeem myself and say why and and talk to you about why a lot of the abilities actually are awesome, contrary to what I might have said in the the pragmatic saga. So be, uh, I'm happy that I have this opportunity. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. So really so. the question is who do we promote first? I kind of vote that we go for Rook just because we want to see what the pillage ability is like. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine with that. I mean, plus if it's just powerful Rook is good. Rook, Rook is the best character. Unnecessarily strong. Yeah. It's he was he was hands down. It's like give him a, give a person an axe and a bow and they're the most powerful. I am also curious so to see if it's it. possible for us to max out our stats and if we do what happens. Do you think that the new max level is going to be 10 for each Wait of these guys? Wait a second. Choose a new ability. Oh, you can cycle through them. So there's okay, so only one for Rook. Wait, maybe Ivor. Horse guard guy. Okay, wait. Promote. Continue. Continue. Oh, yeah, he has two. You can see the little dots. Oh, he can get forced ahead. ahead. <laughs> oh. uh, it doesn't matter, though. I mean, like, <laughs> just... <laughs> Okay, well, cool. Let's, either of those really make Ivor kind of horrifying. Can, I mean, he probably is like literally the only character with this ability because Rook is oh, insane. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. Wow, it's it is possible that when we hit the new max rank, that um, there could even be the chance of getting a third ability. That might be pushing it right because I feel like. Already the balance of Banner Saga 1 was defined on each character having one ability. One ability alone. Um, and that, and, and that was apart. what the world was balanced on. Now that we're introducing two abilities per character, this changes everything. And anyone that's worked on any kind of strategy game in terms of design knows that the more abilities you have, the more complicated everything gets because abilities are so much harder to calculate numerically. One, two... Wait... Couldn't you only have five people in a party before? Uh, no, I think you could have six. I, I'm 90% sure about that. All right. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and go Rook, obviously. Um, he doesn't necessarily need to go first. I generally like to have my big guys go first, so they're kind go, of like... Go back into Rook for me. Huh? Huh? Does it say, okay, we need 15 to get the next rank? I, I was curious to see, yeah, because it was possible that six was the new max, and I think that would have been a little silly if that were the case. No, no, there were items up to nine in that shop. Oh, that's right. So I, I forgot about that. To 10. Okay, cool. So uh, the party we're going to go with is Krumer because he's cool and allows you to do some cool things. Nid, because it's best, uh, she's the easiest character to take advantage of your archer ability with. Mm -hmm. Uh, Elio, because I want to try him out. Absolutely. Uh, Eagle is probably the best character, arguably. I do like that we don't you, have any them. level one or two. No, man. Guys. They're just like straight up like, these yeah. are experienced people. Uh, let's uh, uh, maybe not trick V. Uh, I mean, what, what's his ability? Hacken, does super Hacken. Does he have... Super, oh, yeah. I mean, Hacken is phenomenal. He can do he can Forge, forge Ahead or tempest. tempest. Okay. Not as like unique as Rook, but I guess Rook is sort of the main character. Mm-hmm. Um, let's not do trivia. Let's, I mean, yeah, let's, let's, it's throw really Hacken hard in there. to not do hack and I, I really am honest. a huge fan of the viral party. <laughs> viral party, uh, just, armor, strength, and will. Thing. Let's just give that to Rook. This, what does this ability do? Chance to draw strength attacks to dodge strength attacks. Yeah. Probably Do we never. want to give that to the archer? Because she's already not really going to be taking she, a lot of those. Because she has the farthest range, you're right. So we don't I think really it'd be better for so Hacken actually, or Krumer. Um, Krumer's actually a little squishy comparatively, but maybe Alio. No. Boom. What does this do? Uh, oh, drawing aggro. That'll go to... Is Ivor still beefy since he got his arm cut off? Oh, yeah. 14. I mean, Hacken is... Yeah. Okay, so drawing aggro for Ivor, and then finally, what does this ability do? 
uh, plus one move. Ooh. So that might be good for Alio, actually. Kapow. Done. All right. Party done for now. Nice. Well, on that note, even though we didn't do much more than talk about party stuff, that's actually the end of the episode. This episode was more for people who did play Banner Saga 1 because you got to see all of that <laughs> and enjoy it when we get... That was great. All right. So, so question of the day, though. I want to ask you about the second ability. Yeah. Um, so it, I, I personally think it's a really huge deal, right? And it's awesome that Stoic was ballsy enough to introduce it. Honestly, I think it, it's... It's a huge risk, but I think it makes the gameplay, as so long as it's balanced, right? I think it's going to make the gameplay that much more interesting. It's sort of one of those things that I think needed to happen. I'm actually going to take your question one step forward. Ooh, okay. Um, okay, in general, breaking the limit. Mm. There's very few games I've seen that do this. The only other game that I've seen that does it exactly like this is actually uh, in... Um, Zone of the Enders. And you're talking about breaking the limits of levels. Okay, because so like, because that's... we now have a new tier to reach. Yeah, yeah. Zone of Enders is the same. You, in first game, you can only reach level 5 because you were like a kid piloting a mm. mech. In the next game, you can get all the way up to like 20 or whatever it was just to show how much more experience. So in this uh, game, okay. same thing is happening, right? We now see we now see that next step that the characters can go. So I, I guess to go along with that second ability, how do you feel like that changes the design of the game? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching, everyone. Be sure to vote if you want to see more of the Banner Saga 2, and we'll see you in the next episode. It was like a whole episode looking at the characters. <laughs> it was so exciting. Yeah.